Hi guys, welcome to another material about global war, World War II, worldwide 1939-1945, a solitary board war game by uh, Ben Madison, uh, published by White Dog Games. We already did a couple of uh, videos in the series. Today we continue with a playthrough. Today we'll be playing turns four, five, six, and. If you haven't seen the introductory video, I strongly suggest you do. Uh, under this video, you will see in the description both the first look at, where we explain what the game is about, and also the first three turns which we played, also with the rules explanation. And today, we'll continue with example of play. A brief uh, recap of the first three turns. Polish forces valiantly were defending front A, delaying the uh, fall of France. We are now at early 1941 and France has not yet fallen. Yeah, they are keeping barely, but they are keeping. And the other thing is that due to this, Operation Barbarossa and Operation uh, Pearl Harbor are delayed. There are two things uh, which I probably would like to, to, to mention here. Mm, and I will uh, do the quote from the rule book. When the Operation Barbarossa will happen? Barbarossa must occur on turn after French Falls or on turn 4, whichever turn comes later. So we look at both conditions, what turn it is and whether the France has fallen. This is turn 4, okay, so the first condition is met, but the other condition of the France has fallen is not met. The France will probably fall this turn, so, for example, in turn 5, you had both conditions met, both France fallen at its turn 4 or later. Another very important rule, uh, which pertains to the beginning of the game, is early war priorities starting on turn 1 and going until the turn when Germany invades Russia. All front B attacks on turn 2 are re uh, realized as attacks on front A. Instead, France must be defeated first. So, even if we draw a lot of attacks on B, the France will have to be defeated first. So I will be going through the sequence of play. You probably know it by now. I was very in a very detailed way showing this in the first video. And so we'll be reading from this and referring to the particular steps. This is a very procedural game. So remember when you will be playing, order uh, follow the order exactly to the letter. Okay, so the first point is cheat draw phase, randomly draw a cheat. And now we don't have this first free starting phase. We shuffle and we draw a cheat. Okay, here it is. This is cheat number 10. It will activate Stalin. It will have two attacks on front BB, which is A now. And it's also attack on front F and mushroom cloud which means we can invest in manhattan project okay so we place the uh, turn sheet marker here and we now um, deploy units from calendar box we don't have any units place the calendar events we have victor at c number four which i don't believe is a very good for us Put German Bismarck Raider in the U-boat box. No, it's not very good for us. Bismarck has a strength of five, as you can see. Mm, you need to roll six to defeat him. And when he's defeated, he turns into Prince Eugen. So we have three U-boats and four convoys. Interesting. Now, Mm, we have played cheat base events. Manhattan Project, do we want to do it? Yes, that is why I told you we want to have always at least one dollar because we spent one dollar, we roll a die and we see where will, will we be on the Manhattan Project track. When we get here, that means we can start producing the atomic bomb, not immediately, from turn 24, the technology is not there, but at least the science will be already you know, done. So let's roll. <coughs> Wow, perfect roll. It jumps to six. Okay. 
now that actually turn start face this is finished evening telegraph we are in turn four let's roll six so this is ten yes uh, galant where is galant galant is here minus one drm from all attacks on airplanes on front a there are not yet airplanes here but Mm, this will not be mm, the nice thing yeah, when, when we will need to fight here. We have Italy, Iraq, Syria and Skorzeny on front B. Mm, there is no active front B, so I believe we will not be doing anything, but mm, let's check it. First of all, we check Italy. We rolled Italy. Mussolini stands on his balcony and declares war on the United Nations. Italy joins the Axis. Remove the Italy neutral tile. Italy neutral tile. We remove it from front C. C is now active. The war is on the Libya and Egypt. Deploy the AOI army in Italian East Africa. This is a big army. Let me just find it. Big army. So Italian. The, where do we put it in Italian East Africa? Big army which has five. It is not so easy to crush. Yeah. So we will need really to to, to focus on this. Mm, it hurts you with one uh, minus one DRM on front C and E as you can see both here and here. Put the Yugoslav Nedic prop army in the Balkans. That means that we'll have somebody who will be actually um, distracting the attacks if we, of course, pay them. Where we have Yugoslav, uh, we, let me find, ah, and we put it in Balkans. Uh, the Balkans, here we have it. Okay. It distracts the axis starting with turn already. Nice. So this is first event. We'll have a lot of events in this turn. Um, we had already Italy. We have Iraq and Syria. Iraq. The first time this is rolled, put the Iraq army on its Iraq side in the Near East. Okay, let me find the Iraq army and don't confuse it with Iran. The next time it's rolled, flip Iraq to its German side if it's still on the map. So Near East, it comes here and it, uh, as you can see, it can be German here. Mm hmm. Now we have also Syria, and for Syria army, uh, let me see, flip the Vichy army in Syria to its German side. We don't have Vichy army because France has not fallen, so this event is not happening. And now, I believe this army is not yet uh, affecting us, mm, because only if it will be a German side, it will be affecting us so with minus one on C and B. Mm, that symbol also shows that once it's killed, it's permanently destroyed. That was not the best turn because now the front C is active. But yeah, such things happen. Evening telegraph phase. Now, Axis powers attack phase. First of all, we have F. On F, nothing is happening, so we are lucky. But those two B attacks on front B are turned and to the attacks on front A. Mm, and in order to show you guys how the game flows, and we have a decent reserve of, of cash, we'll not be propping this unit for a time being, just to show you the game plan and how the things happen. So the first attack out of two goes here, and this is destroyed. We don't pay one to prop it. We can prop for two 
ו- ו- uh, Eiffel ו- ו- Paris ו- 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 French, but we don't do it. We would need to spend one, two, three. We preserve it. So both are destroyed, and if both are destroyed, the France falls. And this is exactly what I would like to show to you. How uh, is it done, and what happens? So the France has fallen. So we need to read exactly. Yeah. When the French Paris army, eight number, is eliminated. Yeah, when the French uh, uh, army, uh, Paris army is eliminated, French has fallen. We discard Paris army and deploy the German Garin capital, because there will be air war now, yeah? On front eight, this activates front A as any ordinary front now. Aerial combat on front A operates accordingly to the very same rules as ground combat. We'll be moving the armies here, but it will be the airplane armies, of course. And there is a possibility for a blitz. And the blitz would really represent the Operation Sea Lion, you can say. Uh, yeah, the fall of France activates Fascist Italy on front and front C, but we actually have the event which activated the Italy and front C, so this is a no-brainer. Okay, Vichy colonies. We deploy the Vichy Syria army. Now, so the Syria army, we need to kill them because otherwise they will be very strong. Vichy Syria army. Syria army goes in Near East, so here. And Vichy Malg, Malgache army in Madagascar. And this is here. So they are dormant now. But they can really turn into much more nasty things, which will be Japan or Germany, you know, aligned. We can attack them, <clears throat> but they never impose a DRMs on front. So no DRMs here for this and no DRMs, unless they flip. Mm, okay, now the next turn, the Germans are, you know, uh, clear to start Operation Barbarossa, of course. And we flip the French convoy to its U-boat side, yeah? And we flip the useless Chamberlain to more useful Churchill. <coughs> Sorry. So this is exactly what happens in this situation when the France has fallen. Now, let's continue with uh, Mm, uh, phases. We have now economic warfare phase and we have four maximum raiders and U-bots. They will be sinking everything. I will not risk four and three for sure. I will rather go for two A, B, C. So we'll go here, here. Do we go for two A? No, uh, two A is on six. Uh, that's a tricky one. Maybe we don't want to be too greedy and we want to go that way. Let's roll. This is 8. And what do we have on 8? 2 at 3. So Bismarck and one of the U boats. 8. 2 C and 4. Uh, 2 C, unfortunately, here and 4. Here, which means that our hole is free. We jump to eight. Not bad. Still not bad. Okay, mm, that will be all uh, for this. We don't still have a presidential bonus, no bombing. We have Churchill. And now I would like to talk about the Churchill because we would like to use the Churchill. And by the way, uh, of course, Stalin is not used anymore because it has a red dot. Mm, what Churchill can do, he's a very daring person. In order to check whether Churchill succeeds, you roll a die. On one or six, he fails. Two, three, four, five, he succeeds. Uh, however, you need to put him so many turns in advance yeah, due to this. And yeah, Churchill. 
Churchill can do the British Commander raid, select any target army Panzer or Zich on the globe. If a Churchill roll succeeds, remove, flip the target. Raid on San Nazare, select any target human U boat, not raider. If the raid succeeds, the U boat is placed on the calendar with number of turns forward. You can also do the thing with Bismarck, select any target German or Argentine service raider in any season. Ignore its strength, just attack it with a Churchill day roll. You see, can on this, fail on this. Okay, Caucasus diplomacy. If Caucasus crisis occurs in the turn start phase, you can use Churchill to block it. We didn't have uh, that event yet, and I don't believe it will be a big problem. What I would like to do is to sink Bismarck. I definitely want to sink Bismarck because that's a problem for me. Uh, yeah, and the Bismarck will flip when to the Prince Eugen here. Yeah? Five, three, three. Let me just check it. Uh, yes. So we roll for a Churchill. We'll use him. Successful. And not so bad because one, two, three, only three turns in advance. And he's sunk. So it's now Prince Eugen. Much easier. To sink him in conventional way because you need to roll three to six. Rolling only six, like on Bismarck, would be a disaster. Do we want to use Stalin? No. So <clears throat> now we do the United Nations grant attacks. Can we attack anywhere? Now, you cannot attack this capital because, first of all, you need to have a special pink strategy marker I was referring to which you get only if you mm, crush one particular type of zich. There are a couple of zichs here, the Battle of Normandy, here it will be Stalingrad, here it will be Operation Torch. Mm, what else do we have here? There will be for sure Impal here, and Guadalcanal here, and on front D, what do we have on front D? Uh, yeah, Manjuria. Okay. Uh, just checking the Zich, which is there for your information. Actually, there is no Zich there. There is Tunis, there is Guadalcanal, there is Normandy, there is Impal, and there is Stalingrad. Okay, so nowhere. <coughs> Not in China. And those digits, when you crash, you put the pink uh, token here, and it means that you can try to defeat the um, front altogether, but it's not easy. Let's be honest, it's not easy. You need to have a lot of crushed enemies, uh, not only on this front, but also on, on Justin, and on the other side of the globe also. So, United Nations attack phase. Do we want to attack somewhere now? Uh, this is a problem, but it has five. I would attack those small things, first of all. I would use one dollar and we attack the Syria army. We failed. We use one more Syria army. Yes, this is permanently destroyed. Now Iraq army. Yes, this is permanently destroyed. And now also this Madagascar army. Oh, sorry, let's leave it there. Yes, it's also destroyed. So we get rid of the three things which potentially can turn into something very nasty. Do we want to attack anything else? I believe we'll attack this too. This is a low-hanging fruit also. Ah, failure once again. Or no, let's not do it once again. We'll need some money to fight next turn. So not bad, not bad. Let's do it that way exactly. Uh, now moving further. Mm. Actually, we shouldn't attack here second time. I would not attack here two times because we should also beat the convoys, but okay, we did. 
end of the story. What we will do, this is enough for the attacks. Oh, we attack the surface rider. It will attack here. Yes, we sunk Prince Oregon. And now, turning Britain is not now, Pacific Naval uh, phase not now, industry phase, build partisans, build convoys. Yes, we want to build another convoy. Mm, we will have zero, but I can live with it. Okay, and will not build anything. Allied banking, nothing. Council military event it goes here. Naval reset. One thing which I was supposed to check is for commandos. I believe we played well. The front was not active. So if it's not active, uh, we should. Okay, so the it was, we shouldn't have them here yet, they should be over map. We rolled Skorzenny, so he will be here, and only then he will start entering the front. Okay, this is, this is fine. So this ends the turn uh, 4. Quite deliberately, we allowed the France to fall, so you can see how, how does the fall looks like. Now we have 1, 2, 3 fronts active. Things are getting interesting, because next turn, Next turn, we will have Operation Barbarossa, and it will be something really to watch for. Turn five, we'll launch now an unexpected um, uh, attack of the Germans, the Operation Barbarossa. Uh, we shall see how it will go for them, and it, it of course happens because of the Hitler's orders. We have a fall of France, and it for turn or later, so we will not be drawing the random chip, but we'll be playing the Operation Barbarossa chip. And this is exactly the first phase. So here it is Operation Barbarossa. Sorry, you can see it now. And we will have seven attacks on B, one attack on A, two attacks on C. So, as you can see, uh, there will be huge, huge, huge attacks here, uh, yeah. The Balkans actually uh, will help us, probably with, with preventing the total collapse, but let's see how it, how it goes. Okay, uh, we go. Turn, start phase. Place a turn sheet on the calendar. Deploy units from calendar, we don't have any. Place play calendar events. Uh, so calendar event is Victor at C5. Is it another U-boat? Let me see. Five. No, put German Cormoran rider in the U-boat box. Cormoran. Cormoran was not the most difficult to destroy. No, definitely not. But he will be a nuisance during this turn. Before we get rid of him. Okay, mm, now play calendar events, play cheat base events. We don't have a cheat base event. Evening telegraph phase. We roll a die. This is turn 5, so we add 5. 10. I believe we already had 10. Yeah, exactly. It's here. So, Galant. Galant. It was here and he was giving the minus on attack on front A, which is not a problem. We, Italy already happened, Iraq and Syria. You know, if we have not acted on them previous turn, they probably will turn now to the German side and will impose those minus one on B and C fronts. We have Skorzen and now he actually attacks on front B. Uh, he has to be put on one of the armies. Let me see if we can do it if no armies are there, because that's a tricky situation, yeah? Uh, yeah. Uh, tells you to deploy and on which front. The very first time, okay, it's rolled, it goes on the map. Every subsequent time a commando is rolled, only deploy the commando if it's face up on the design side when rolled. Uh, place command on any army of your choice, not capital, on the named front. 
Okay, there's no army, so it simply flips to the other, the other side and it's not deployed. We don't need to defeat them. That's good. That's really, really, really good. Okay. So this was evening telegraph. Now Axis powers attacks phase. We will be deploying Axis armies. Let me start with A because this is the shortest one. We simply put the strongest army here. Then we have two C, so we put those two armies here. So this Africa Corps and another army here. It's really a pity that we didn't manage to crush this two. Now, you see guys, they are one attack from the Blitz. We need to do something about those Italians, definitely. And now the tricky part of the game starts because we need to have some money for this also. We'll get there, especially Cannon Meat will help us with the front B. But yeah, it's not, not will be that easy. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now we have those seven attacks on front B. And let me see, yeah, this will be the destruction which we can prop. These are not partisans and if they are killed, yeah, it will be, uh, it will be then the Greece. Uh, you see, before actually attacking Eastern Front, they have to deal with those guys. We can't prop them uh, because we don't have money now. We used everything for convoys, but we still should survive those seven attacks because what will happen? The first attack kills the Yugoslav, the second attack kills the Greeks. I believe that means also that we need to put the Greek surrender button here. Button token. Yes, Greek surrender to the Balkans. Yep, we put it here. Ah, we need more money. We need more money and we don't have Roosevelt to give us more money. But yeah, what can we say? Uh, so, uh, they are defeated. These were two attacks and another five attacks are deploying armies here. So they are attacking with a full strength. Fortunately, we have Stalin. You will see why is it so important. And his attacks on front B will be game changing and game saver. Now, deploy Panther armies. We also need to deploy Panther armies. This is not winter, so we need to do it. 7.5. Checking this quickly. Yeah, place the Panzer. Okay, it was not removed during this turn. It's not already on the map. It's not a Russian winter. These are free, free are Russian winter here. Yeah. Okay, so we need to first defeat the Panzer because before we can attack any of those armies, which will be. A nuisance, uh, definitely a nuisance. So, Birma Road is okay, Panzers are here, that's all. Now we have tricky situation. Look here, both Front B and Front C simply are the, at, uh, the verge of the Blitz. In the next turn, so um, during the attack on Pearl Harbor, we will also have some attacks on, 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 both, on both fronts. So, we need to get prepared. Fortunately, we still have Stalin and we will be definitely using him to, to, to help us with this fight. So, we go to economic warfare phase now. We place the columns. We have again four U-boats. So we can sink four, three and two A. Two A they will probably not sink, but four and three most probably, yes. So let's not get greedy. I will not be risking too much, you know, because otherwise we will not get anything. Let's see where they will hit. This is six. Six means... Oh, shit. Exactly one convoy will be hit here. Four. And two C. So our hole is three. Not the largest one. 
unfortunately and one of our convoys is sunk we should probably not not be so happy with with uh, trying to 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 uh, to risk it here well anyhow let's what happens what happens uh, yes, we don't have presidential ball uh, bombing, we don't have uh, Churchill is not there yet. We can use Stalin and we shall use Stalin and we should use it as a shock army and this army will attack the Panthers. Six, yeah, we are defeated. Very good. Now we'll be able to easier get beneath them and that's very, very important. Okay, uh, do we want to cash land lease? Most probably yes. If you uh, enact aid to Russia, just raise the cannon with plus four. No, but I will do the destroyer deal. The destroyer deal is an interesting thing. You draw um, one carrier and you put the U boat, one of the U boats, that many turn server. Yeah? We draw five. Wow. Five. It's unfortunately destroyed. But one of the U boats goes five turns from one, two, three, four, five. Oh my goodness. If we manage to destroy Cormoran two, we should probably have some better times. That was nice. Okay. So this was it, United Nations attack phase, and now we would need to do something. We would need to do something with all those things which we see on the map. First of all, we will use one dollar to attack one of those arms with two. Mm -hmm. and by the way, when we were deploying it here, we could potentially use partisans. I don't believe we need mandatory use. Yeah, I didn't want to use Malta. Yeah, it was not my intention to do it. Free. So yes, those are defeated from the front. See, we will not use more money. I want to get my uh, ships back. What I will do? I will be using cannon meat, and we'll be attacking. So we attack those guys. Number two. No. Yes. So we used to come with two at a time. We know there will be many more of them next turn. And we don't want the blitz though. We attack again. Four. We destroy the vows. Now, this is a good question. Uh, do we want to attack again? Did I move it? One, two, three. Yeah, I believe I move it. Ah, hard choices, hard choices. We don't have any bonus here. We would need to roll five or six. I believe I will use one cannon mate to check it. No, or maybe even two. No, I will not use more. Although it will prevent the collapse. There will be at least three attacks there next turn. We used, of course, Stalin. Mm, and we will not have anybody to... No, it doesn't work. And last roll. No. Yes. Okay. We use, just as Russian did, all their power. But at least next turn should not have a, a you know, blitz effect. Uh, during the Pearl Harbor. It's a tough game, guys. It's really tough. Keeps you on the edge. Okay. Do we want to do anything more? No, not necessarily. I believe we are fine here. Uh, one thing here, which we wanted to test, is also attacking this Cormoran, but then we will not if we use one of those dollars on attack on Cormoran, I will not build a new convoy. I believe it's better to have not four to three, but three to two. So we'll use one dollar and we'll attack Cormoran. Yeah, that was not a 
difficult task and we sink him and we have one left. We still can get some more cannon meat from the Liberty ships next turn, so this is fine. Okay, Doc. Uh, Pacific naval phase we skip. Industrial phase we don't have money to actually build too much. So turn and phase. Allied banking will leave one. Cancel military event. It goes here. Naval reset. We move all of those here. I'm I'm glad with the naval situation. I know one more one more convoy would be helpful, but it's not bad. Uh, now. Uh, we don't quit India. That will be all. We survived. We survived Barbarossa. We actually in, uh, inflicted a huge, huge defeat on the uh, Germans. But it will not always be like this, especially because we don't have cannon on it anymore. Okay, let's pause here for a moment and then we'll jump to the last turn for today. It will be turn 6 with Pearl Harbor. We'll go now to turn uh, six, and it will be Pearl Harbor. This is the beginning is a bit scripted, but <clears throat> not not too much. And then you have full uh, flexibility to play the game as you like. Simply, the author wanted to make sure that there are those Western Front attacks at the beginning of the game here, and then. If particular conditions are met, you have also the attacks uh, in bar, uh, on the um, Soviet Union, Barbarossa, and then on, uh, 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 of course, US. The rule says that if the turn you just played was a Barbarossa, do not draw a random turn sheet. Instead, put the Pearl Harbor turn sheet on the calendar. And let's see what this has. It has, of course, Barbar uh, the Vapor Harbor, so 5e attacks, but also on Barbarossa and also some politics on the Caucasus. So let's, it will also flip, we can do it immediately, Churchill to the available. And I believe we have, we'll have also Mr. Winky, not Roosevelt, <coughs> on our side. So we go. First of all, cheat draw phase, we did it. Place turn cheat on calendar, deploy units from calendar, no units and no events this time, but we have a cheat uni uh, event. Let me read it. What is it? It's uh, Middle East politics, yeah, Caucasus crisis. So um, this event is Caucasus crisis. <clears throat> if this symbol appears on the tile, war may spread to Turkey and Iran. This can only happen if a Greek surrender tile is currently in Balkans. Unfortunately, Greek surrendered. That's true. Any Turkish, Iranian, Iraqi, or German army deployed in uh, to the Caucasus or Near East. Fortunately, we crushed everybody. Uh, under this or any other rule counts as an axis for modified purposes. First of all, Turkish entry. Each time this cheat is drawn, a Turkey may join Axis, and if they join Axis, they have really strong army, like five, I believe it is. Yeah, big strong army. We don't want them to join on the side of the Axis. Uh, we roll to die, and add the number of Axis armies on front B. Actually, one plus one for each Axis army currently in Iran, Iraq, and Syria, zero. If a total is six in or higher, Turkey join um, Axis. There is no way for them to join, because even if you rolled nine, if you add one, it's 10, so they don't join. Okay, if a Turkey joins the Axis, deploy the Iran army on its free side in Caucasus, the Iraq army on German side in the Near East, and the Syria army German side in the Near East. It would be complete disaster if it's, this would happen. A complete disaster. We can prevent this, of course, if we would have a face up a viable Churchill too. Iranian entry. If Turkey is still neutral, the first time, only first time, the symbol is drawn, place the Iran army on its one side. So, not so difficult to crush yet. Let me find them. Okay, looking for the oh, Iran. Uh, in, in the Caucasus. So they go here. 
And the next time the symbol is drawn, flip Iran to its free. And it will be uh, really difficult to tackle. We need to crush them. We need to destroy it, definitely. Churchill's diplomacy would uh, potentially allow us to prevent it, but uh, any, any uh, negative, you know, uh, resolution of, of this cheat. Okay, so I believe that will be it. Evening telegraph phase, we have phase six. Let's see what we'll get. Seven, I believe we were already there. Seven A is Wavell. Plus one DRM against uh, Italian armies. Fantastic. That's very good. And we have, of course, seven, eight. We have Xinjiang again turning away from us. They are flipping all the time, as you can see. Uh, yep, roll the dice and uh, add num uh, turn number. Okay, we did Axis power attack phase. We'll be deploying armies. And how we'll be deploying this? Let us read the Pearl Harbor. Or maybe before we do the Pearl Harbor, uh, we can do those 3B attacks here. That simply means that three armies are coming here back. Okay, but there is no blitz. They are one attack short to do it. But for the Pearl Harbor, uh, yeah, Japan launches its sneak attack on U.S. Navy forces at Pearl Harbor. France E and F go active. Both of them go active. Their Axis attacks are performed starting this turn with those on the Pearl Harbor cheat. So five attacks on E. And no attacks on F this turn. On front E, flip the Japan neutral tile to its Thailand side. Okay. Capital side, then place the Singapore tile on front E. The Dutch is on the Singapore's back. So where do we have the Dutch? The Dutch are here. Okay, Singapore is very strong, but very costly to prop it. Okay, they will distract Japanese on this front. And no Japanese armies deploy on front E until Singapore and the Dutch are eliminated. On front F, flip Japan neutral to its Bataan side. And the Bataan will be here. This will distract Japanese attacks there. Uh, 14 and 31 armies. 14 and 31 armies goes here. On front, no other Japanese armies deploy on front F until Bataan is eliminated. So those actually distract yeah, the axis. We move the pre US president, finally. Finally, we move uh, to the leadership pool. Winky, why are you here? He will pay you income starting with turn. Roll the die, except on six, Brazil joins you and... No! Brazil is not joining UN, so we will not put a Brazilian Navy here, uh, which can potentially later on when we have escorts uh, be also an escorted area. Wow, six on Winky and six on Brazil. That's really nasty. It's really, really nasty. Randomly draw one US carrier from the carrier cup, remove it to the counter tray. This represents damage during the Pearl Harbor. Oh, I'm so sorry. It was zero. Dog. Now, those five attacks. Five attacks on E. The first attack, no way. I don't have two money to, to, to prop it, so Singapore is down. The second attack, we will prop the Dutch. And we did it successfully. The third attack will kill them, unfortunately. The fourth and the fifth will deploy armies. Not the strongest, but still. These are, these are armies. Okay, that will also mean that the naval phase will be played this turn, because uh, as you can see, there are no Dutch guys to, to keep the navy uh, at bay. So we will learn something new also. Now, uh, 
we need to now to deploy panthers, but it's winter, so we don't deploy the panther. Very good. Uh, then uh, check Birma road status. If there is three or more armies, I uh, believe the capital will count as an army. 7.6. If there are three or more armies on front E, see the Birma road. This is actually uh, also treated as an army, so the Birma road is closed now. So that means minus one DRM on attacks here and minus one for two. So this is in total minus two. We need to get rid of those guys. We need to get rid of those guys. Somehow we need to get rid of those guys too. There are a lot of things we need to get rid of, as you can see. And have money for this. And also do something with this. It's not looking easy. Economic warfare, place convoys. We have two U-boats, two U-boats, only sink four and three and two A. Four and three and two A, which is not such a big problem. Uh, we will go to two C most probably. Oh, it's on seven. Now this time we will do something else. Ah, we didn't take this from there. We do it that way. Let's see if it makes sense. No, let's not be so aggressive. Let's do it that way. And let's see what we can get out of this. To you. They rolled two. This is two A to B. Uh, so one is here, one is here. So we have two plus three, five. Not bad, but presidential bonus, which is six in total. Don't have strategic bombing. We don't have Churchill. We can use Stalin, and we can cash land lease. We will cash land lease, and we will get four more here. And where the Stalin will attack? Stalin will be attacking. Definitely on this front. He can only attack here, Caucasus, potentially here. So I believe he will attack the Northern Army also. Yeah, they are crushed. And he is used now. And we move to United Nations attack phase. So many things to do, guys. So many things to do. Uh, we'll use China 8. I believe we can use it on Xinjiang. 9-7. Let, let me just quickly see it, if I can do it. Front, uh, yeah. You say to China, front DE or against Xinjiang. I will attack Xinjiang. Okay. Yes, they turned. They flipped. I will use one cannon mid to attack Romania. Let me know. Another one. Sorry. Okay. So we have four, we have two, but Romanians are not there. I will not be attacking those force, that's too much. Now, as for the money, I will attack here. Only second attack succeeded, really. Uh, do we have any other those guys? Those guys will have to go down with a Churchill, I believe. I don't see other way to deal with them. We still have four money. Mm. I believe we might need them for Batan. Here it's not bad. We have plus one or Italian armies, but we have minus one for those. Mm. I'm thinking if we should not also attack a bit there. Don't we don't have good options now? We don't. Yeah. Unfortunately. So no, I believe we will stay where we are. We are fine. We are too difficult to crush them here. 
uh, there is a minus one here and before we do anything here it take ages here is interesting uh, rule it actually uh, it, it's called uh, let me see island hoping 914 and maybe I should refer to this so you know how to attack front F is an island home attack on front F work differently because of army naval interaction in the amphibious island hoping campaigns from Guadalcanal to Okinawa when launching a front attack at one DRM for each Japanese army and minus for each navy if we have three armies here and three navies it nullifies but if we would have such situation that would mean that I have plus two minus three and if there is five armies here or the navy is severely crashed but really is something which helps us and helps me uh, with, with, with this okay um, I believe I will not spend more money I'm a little uncomfortable here I just hope there will be no to see attacks next turn uh, next turn we'll focus definitely on those guys then we can clean up some of those if we have time we can also clean up some of those let's see but let's not end yet this was United Nations attack phase now Pacific naval phase for the first time we have Pacific naval phase what will happen we'll be rolling a die and as you can see there are some numbers here and there will be ships which are be moving uh, to those to those areas mm, namely uh, uh, we roll one die we execute japan's naval mission we have uh, we can have kishu effect kishu effect means uh, that the japanese at war and uh, current turn has a yellow no they don't have yellow turn number dicks uh, we can uh, okay not not not, not this kishu is something different if a fifth japanese ship is deployed it's similar to France, to any one C box. You immediately suffer a Kishu. If the roll results in two or three Kishus in a single turn, you must resolve them all. What happens? You draw one random US carrier from the cup and remove it to the counter tray. It can be rebuilt. You move one allied non Soviet city from high to low morale. And you take the weakest red dot Japanese ship in the sea box and flip it to its white because we will be destroying them and they will be weaker, weaker uh, versions. Okay. That's never easy in this game. Let's see. We rolled two. So we'll be adding a ship here and only here nothing nothing else roll one die to execute japanese naval mission check for kishu effect mm, so what what we do we move the highest strength i believe mm -hmm. so this is five. Oh my god this midway is a disaster for us if we attack here Yeah. No, there is no Kishu, there is no Japanese yellow disc events because there is no yellow here. Uh, yeah, we can we can now draw one US carrier cheat to see how many actions we'll have. I want it and I will need to think if I want to use them for some attacks. Okay, this is free, so we have three actions. I'm deeply concerned about those guys, but to kill them is a complete, complete craziness. You need to roll more than six, more than five, uh, which is which is not not easy. We have Spruance in Hawaii, and you went sent him to one C box only. The first turn he is used, he adds two to all your combat day rolls. Then you flip him to his plus one side for the rest of the game, but he can be returned back. Mm, when a die is rolled with a Spruance modifier, the roll unfortunately is not only the battle result, but also the number of turns Spruance is out of action. If you roll three times, only the last roll will be the one which will be uh, counting. 
I believe we need to get rid of those ships. I will send Spruance here and I will do three attacks. Whom we attack? Who is the weakest at the back? Okay. So we will be attacking here. So we attack Hiryu and then Zuikaki if we manage to get them. Uh, normally you need to roll six thanks to Spruance. Uh, you need to roll a four, five, six, which is much more achievable. Let's see how it goes. Yes, the first one is defeated, and I believe uh, they moved to Kure naval base. And five, we would need to move him five turns back, so this is not easy. Now, the five, six. So those guys are also destroyed. Oof. Yamato. Five. No, he is not, but the Spruance will be in three turns, which is not bad. Which is not bad. And here, potential attacks. I, I think now we have possibility to control it. If you would have five and sixes here, they will be attacking you all the time, at least now, it, it, it's not so bad. So this was our um, uh, US naval combat using naval action, and now we go to industrial phase. So you see, all of those phases, were, uh, all of these phases were not used until the um, Pearl Harbor started happened. So what industrial phase can give us? Maybe we can build some partisans. Maybe build some convoys. No, we don't have convoys. We cannot escort convoys. We can rebuild some of the carriers, but it's too early. We have enough of them. Over the hump is not a good idea. There are no undefeated commanders. I'm wondering about those partisans here, and how does the partisans work if we put them here? The partisans work in that way. Let me spend two money on this. But if we draw, and we'll probably be drawing the armies here, we check how many armies we have there. And we roll a die. If we roll five or six, we manage to prevent this army from entering. And then we, uh, we check if the die roll, die roll was greater than the number of Axis armies on the front before the attack, then we remove the partisans to partisans pool, otherwise it stays. And remember, so the more the army, the better. And remember that we will also have this additional bonus of partisan uprising if we would like to uh, crush, crush, crush the enemy. So what we do, we simply roll a die and add modifier in the number of arms. We'll not show it uh, now because yeah, that's, that's something which will be happening later on. But all in all, I believe uh, we'll not buy anything more. We'll buy the partisans here for the for the Soviet part. Now, turn end, Allied banking will leave two money to cannon meet and to aid to China. The actions went to zero. We canceled the military event. We were afraid to attack here, sorry. Naval reset. Naval situation is not so bad, I would say. We still managed to get some money out of here. We don't quit India and we'll return to step one. Okay, guys, I believe I will stop here. We played the first six turns of the Great War. As you can see, we reached the moment where almost all the rules, with the exception of how to defeat the enemies, were covered. And, and uh, that way you can see how the game quickly speeds up through the first three turns attack on the Western countries, on Poland, on Denmark, on Norway, on Belgium, Netherlands, and, and France. Then how the Barbarossa erupts, then how the uh, Pearl Harbor starts. What will happen now? It will be still very difficult uh, for the Allies. They need to survive another portion of U-boats, attacks on all the fronts, all of them are active now. They need to spend money here, 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 there, everywhere. They have Winky instead of Roosevelt, which is a disaster. 
but we have also a good position regarding all this Middle East, Caucasus and other stuff here. Yeah, we already know that here nothing bad will happen. We crush Madagascar, Iraq, Iran, Syria. One of the tricky things which will still happen is India and colonial Belgium yeah, in Congo. But if we manage to deal with them, then we will be able to focus on the main armies. Uh, by the way, uh, yeah, we have Churchill in the moment, Spruance, and we really pushed one U but farther, far in the in the in the future. So this is also not bad. What are the prognostics? Not bad. In my usual games, I already have at least two, can uh, two, two, two cities in the low morale. I didn't show you how the, this works, unfortunately, because uh, because yeah, we, we we were doing too good. It's enough to say that uh, when the uh, city moves from this morale to here, so for example, if there is a blitz, uh, yeah, um, because there can never be more than five armies on the front, you will simply roll two dice with no DRMs. In the, the total is higher than the number of cities in the higher morale box. But if it succeeds, succeeds, and if it succeeds, you move another. Uh, city, so even two cities per one <clears throat> blitz. If you run out of the cities, you are done for the game. That's how it works. But if you manage to prevent the blitz, so you move one city but you roll below the number of high morale, you will have some one attack on the front to, 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 to prevent. It's tough, it's difficult. I can tell you it's difficult, but it's the beauty of this game. That's all for today. I hope you like this material, I hope you like this game, it's really incredible. I play it, I don't know which time already, and each time I am discovering something new, something fresh, something very interesting, and I, it's a very replayable game and full of uh, great solutions. I strongly recommend you to try it, uh, Ben Madison does a great job, and here, in this particular um, game. He was uh, collaborating very closely with Wes Ernie and we have something beautiful uh, created here. If you like this material, don't hesitate to give thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content like this, kindly please subscribe. Every small subscription counts for a, such a small content creator like me. Also, if you'd like to comment, um, share your opinion, ask, point to any errors, feel free to do this in the comment section. That's all for today. Thank you for watching and thank you for being with me.